Hey, kids, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and Pastor Lizzo just climbed under his desk. It's so great to see you, buddy. Uh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks for spending it with me. <laughs> That's right. Hey, uh, you should have uh, uh, you, you should have played like uh, uh, that uh, happy birthday song from the Beatles, but then it would have been copyright. You should have walked up some stairs instead of just popped up, but here we are. So um, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> the elevator <laughs> there it is there it is um <laughs> i hope the two people listening on audio are incredibly disappointed to not actually see our antics your antics everybody's Roger. antics um but uh it's potpourri so uh throwing a dart oh. at a map uh let's go micah six <laughs> well no see that's not fair because that's nobody not believes fair. in their right mind that that without actually studied I, like that I would have any idea because uh, I bet you right now uh, you ask the average pastor out there uh, if there is a Micah six and they'd be like 50 50 because when was the last time honestly folks uh, when was the last time you actually read the book of Micah it's in the one-year lectionary but I think that's chapter one so yeah uh, the three-year gets it uh, uh, twice okay um and uh, okay, fair enough. You get the Epiphany one, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, Bethlehem, O Ephrathah, blah blah blah, right? That's Jesus. the Hebrew, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but other than that, who reads? Who reads it? Anyways, I'm doing a Bible study, midweek Bible study. So I'm humble flex. Yeah. Go that? for it. They said that was a humble flex, but okay. <laughs> who reads that? Let's go. Um. <laughs> Apart from doing a Bible study on it, who reads Micah? Let's be honest. I don't. I don't say, I, hey, this is going to be a, a great morning devotion, Micah 4. I don't do that. Six. Micah 6. I know, but well, we're doing 6, right? Okay. okay. So anyway, and I'm just going to do the first part of uh, Micah 6, the first half. It's really interesting uh, if you read it. Do you want me to read it? I'm going to read it real quickly. I would love right? that. Okay. Uh, hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people. He will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, did, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what, what happened at Shittim and Gilgal that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. And then it's changing. That's all the Lord talking, and now it's somebody else. Uh, uh, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn of my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Now it's switching again. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. All right. So my first of all, no, first of all, I'm I'm a little disappointed you didn't do like puppet voices when the character switched, but let's let's go. Time in. <laughs> Micah. <laughs> Micah chapters. So Micah is is uh, uh, t uh, prophesying during the same time as Isaiah, right? And so. Uh, during his tenure, uh, the northern kingdom falls, but the southern kingdom hasn't fallen yet, right? So Babylon hasn't fallen yet. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff that uh, Micah, it talks a little bit to the northern kingdom, but a lot to the southern kingdom. Uh, and just beforehand, he was talking about a remnant, right? The remnant that God is going to hold. Um, but that remnant on, on the chronological timeline doesn't happen yet. Right. It's weird. He, he talks in past tense about a future event. It's just a, a weird, strange thing. But what he's talking about here um, and our English doesn't do the best because uh, uh, the, the Hebrew uh, helps a little bit better at the end of um, uh, where is it? At the uh, at the beginning of verse two. Right. It says here, you mountains, the indictment of our Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we think that that's God indicting. Right. But it's not. In the Hebrew, it, it has a better understanding of we have an indictment against God. Okay? So we're angry at God. 
That's what's going on, which changes the whole thing because right after that, at the end of verse uh, two, we hear that God then has an indictment against us. So first we have this indictment against God. We've got a beef with him. We've got a problem with what God has done, right? And that's how the sinner always is. The sinner can never be happy uh, with uh, his, his lot in life right? Uh, what's happening to him. He never has enough or too, uh, too much bad stuff is going on. And we all want to have this problem, this, 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 uh, we want to yell at God for what he's done or what he's allowed to do, right? So we've got an indictment against God. So God says, hey, uh, okay, fine. Tell it to the mountains, right? Tell it to creation, right? That's here, your beef with me. What problem do you have with me? Well, what's the issue Every time that uh, we uh, we get angry and we get bitter and we get mad at God and we say, God, we have a problem with you. And if God actually comes out and says, okay, let's hear it. What do you, what do you, what do you got? I, you're not letting me do the bad things that I know are bad, but I want to do them. And I hurt from other people doing bad things that I wish they wouldn't do. So simultaneously let me do bad things without consequence and also stop other people from doing bad things without consequence, please. We, right. We want to say all of that, but really, is that an indictment against God? No, it's a hundred percent on me. Right. So, so we can say all that most of the time we do, but if we're honest with it ourselves, it's like, oh, but that's not. That's not your fault. So I, 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 I'm placing my anger in the wrong place, completely placing it in the wrong place. But I'm mad at God because I'm sure I don't want to actually think it through. I'm sure that he's at fault, right? He's the one who's at fault. So that's what goes. I know it's really boring. I'm sorry. No. Um, <laughs> I got in late. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, then, so then God says, uh, no, I have an indictment against you. I'm the one, right? Yeah. And then later on, so then it goes in verse three, he actually asks, he says, okay, tell me, tell me right now, what have I done? What have I done to you? How have I, how have I wearied you guys? Right? So he's laying this law heavy. And then he continues on in verse four and five. He says, no, remember what happened. And this is the weird part, because we think this is where God would actually say, um, hey, what have I done? Or uh, what have I done to you? Let me tell you what you've done to me. Right. He doesn't do that. He's done that earlier in Micah. He's done that talking about you've gone after other gods. And then he's also done second, second table of the law stuff where he's like, this is how you've treated your, your neighbors bad. But here he doesn't do that. What does he do in verse four and verse five? He doesn't say, look at all the bad stuff you did. He says, no, uh, remember everything that I've done for you. Remember everything. And let's go back. Let's, I'm, I'm your savior. I've redeemed you from slavery. I haven't wearied you. I've literally brought a burden off of you from slavery. And he's talking very specifically about uh, Egypt, but more importantly, he's talking about sin, death, and the devil. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is what God has done. I've done this. I've redeemed you. Right? And then I've sent you these prophets, and I've sent you priests. Right? Moses and Aaron and Miriam too, right? I, I've done all of these things for you. And then remember what took place with Balak or Balak, however you pronounce it, and Balaam, right? Balaam, the king of, uh, uh, before you, uh, you guys went to the promised land, Balak wanted uh, uh, to have Balaam, a prophet of the Lord, curse you. And I said, no. Even though Balak later on, or ba Balaam was, was a bad prophet, uh, I didn't allow that, right? Cursing was going to come to you and i saved you from all of that so what what indictment do you have against me i've done nothing but be your god and bring you salvation and redemption and life that's what our lord lays out here and i'll pause there before we get into six through eight if you had anything you wanted to bring out no it's just kind of um humbling to know that as mad as we get with god he he also probably gets frustrated with us it's just that we do very different things with it i would imagine <laughs> Right, right. And I think God does, uh, probably, not probably, probably, he does get frustrated with it. It says he does. We can't just take those words out of his mouth and seal them up. Um, like he says, he gets frustrated with us over our sin, over our, our obstinance. And so the, the problem, the scary part of that is that I know what I do with my obstinance. I, I throw a temper tantrum. I write people off. I hold a grudge. I, I punish wherever I can. Um, so, so hopefully his thoughts are not going to be my thoughts and his ways are not going to be my ways. Right. 
right? And and then we want to make up with it, make make up for it. So this is the interesting thing mm-hmm. with the the rest with verses six through eight. If you if you uh, read it at home, you'll you'll hear about talking about sacrifices. And so this is it's a change of uh, uh, of speaker here. This is probably Israel speaking, right? Israel as, as a whole speaking, right? And this isn't somebody who's kind of uh, angry and being snarky sort of thing. This is somebody who thinks now they've had God's law, verses 1 through 5, being placed upon them. They see it, right? Because God mm-hmm. says, uh, I have nothing, I've done nothing to you. You've done stuff to me, right? I've always been your God. So here it is. They have the law of God uh, upon their hearts. They know that they're sinners, but they understand worship and the gospel wrong. Mm -hmm. Because when the, the sinner, when they hear that they're a sinner and there's no way to dig out of it, right? No way to say, no, I'm not really a sinner. No, it's clear you're a sinner. We say, okay, now what must I do to be reconciled back to God? Right? Mm-hmm. That's the thought. And what's really interesting here, too, this uh, this uh, word bow, it's the second line in verse 6. Right? We hear this. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? When we in our English hear this bow, we think of uh, a proper worship bow. Mm-hmm. This is a bow uh, before a tyrant. Mm-hmm. Right, so I'm, I'm I'm cowering in fear. I'm kissing your feet because that's the type of God you are. You've shown me that you're mm-hmm. this God who's angry. So now, what must I bring before you so you won't be angry anymore? And so he goes through these sacrificial things, but the sacrifices are all wrong because well, yeah, they're evil. Uh, well, Pastor Goodman, what which way? True worship. Which way is that going? True worship is God giving and us receiving, but like, it's just look at earth. just how evil we make this when we we want to make it right with God. This is child sacrifice. Right. Don't get, don't jump there yet. But- how do you just let's slow your roll to child sacrifice? <laughs> because then, there's some interesting things that happen beforehand. We start low and then we go all the way up to child sacrifice, right? Yeah. So he says, uh, uh, shall I come with a burnt offering? Burnt offerings are the only offerings in the Old Testament that, everything was burnt you didn't get a portion back for yourself it was all burnt all sent to god right so first we're starting with the burnt offering i'm going to give everything here then calves plural Mm -hmm. a year old now for us in, in in our ears we don't hear anything of that but if you go back to leviticus where god lays out what sacrifices there are there's only one instance where he talks about a calf being sacrificed and then he also talks about that calf in a different place. Uh, the, the calves that you should bring are eight days old. Hmm. Why not a year? Costs a lot. Right. Like, honestly. So, right. So this, and so God, even in his, in him setting up the sacrifices and says, listen, most of the time you're going to do turtle doves and a goat. Uh, uh, occasionally this one time you, you, you may bring a calf. Make sure that you haven't spent a year's worth of your money on it, because it's not about what you're giving to me, right? Mm. But this guy here is saying, okay, maybe I should come with calves, many of them a year old. That's how good my sacrifice is going to be for you, God. Or better yet, how about a thousand rams or 10,000 rivers of oil? Now, yeah, that's hyperbole, but he's really talking about, I've got to come up with a really, really, really super duper good sacrifice so God will be happy with me. And then finally, like you said, Pastor, shall I give my firstborn sacrifice? Should I offer uh, no. my own flesh and blood? No, 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 you, you, should is, not, you should not do that. And then, right. And Just then to be the clear. Point is, God specifically <laughs> says, no child sacrifices. And then it's in Deuteronomy, he says, hey, I know you guys are going to go into the promised land. There's a bunch of heathens in there. Some of the stuff that they do is really bad. Sexual perversion uh, that's incorporated to uh, idolatry, but also they sacrifice their kids. Because if one calf is good, then many calves is better. And then a thousand rams is better. And what's better than that is is a son, right? And so you're going to be tempted to do that. Don't do that. Don't, Don't do that, Don't kids. Do because don't sacrifice your kids and this is friends don't let friends right. do child sacrifice and this is the beautiful thing why because i'm gonna do it yeah 
because I'm the one. You've got this sacrificing all wrong. Remember what he said back in four and verse five. He wasn't saying you're a real bad guy. You did this bad. You did that bad. He, did. he says, remember back when I was your God and I did everything for you and I redeemed you, right? And that's what the whole worship is and the whole sacrificial system is. It's not, uh, I'm really super duper pleased in you slitting the throat of a, an animal. It's not what this is about. The sacrifices of the Old Testament point forward to Christ, and they are vehicles and avenues in which the cross comes backwards to the people. The sacrifices are God giving the cross to the people. And don't you dare sacrifice a son. That's what I do, and I do that for you. This is the gospel. It's it's Jesus in the Old Testament right here. You were right. Jesus is in the Old Testament. Yay. And then verse 8, the last thing here uh, to wrap up in verse 8, he says, okay, fine. Now, but you know what's good, right? You don't need sacrifices and worship isn't earth to heaven. You know what's good. We've talked about this. He's told you, oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require? Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly in the Lord. Sounds like faith. Be, have faith and be kind to your neighbors. That's what the Lord's asking. He's not asking you to, to empty your wallet He's not asking you to uh, redeem yourself. He's not asking you to somehow be reconciled back to him. He's done all the reconciling. He's done all the sacrificing. And hey, guess what? He always did. And, and willfully, like willingly, um, that, that the son was not sort of robbed of his his agency in this but but jesus wanted to die that you would live and that the consequence of your sin would not be borne out on you or worship your right. children right yeah this wasn't this wasn't a, a thing like uh, uh the the son's going kicking and screaming the son goes on complaining forth i think is the hymn yeah that's a, that's a pretty good hymn i think we get to sing that i think we get to sing that this sunday were you there no good no, I wasn't there it's okay I don't know. That's all I got. You got anything else? No, you take the elevator out. It's stuck. It's stuck. <laughs>